in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. It seems to me the entity that planned mankind made a very wise decision not to let us know our future. How many of us would be defeated before we began? As it is, only the fortunate few get an even break from destiny. This tale concerns two men, pursued and captured by their fate. Said Lord Chesterfield, My fate is like that of an eagle who, being shot down, observes his own feathers on the arrow that kills him. Of this story, he couldn't have said it better. Paul, when I saw you eyeing the maid of honor at your wedding to Louisa, I knew right then and there Louisa was marrying the wrong person. Now, hold on. Till the day she died, Louisa never thought so. I never let her find out anything about me that would hurt her. Hmm. You really think she knew nothing? Not unless you told her. <laughs> a fine friend you are. Oh, Paul, you don't need a friend. You need a keeper. Our mystery drama, Let No Man Put Asunder, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by James Agate Jr. and stars Michael Wager and Russell Horton. I shall return shortly with Act One. Start your book. Let me set the scene for you. It is December 31st. By special permission of the warden, architect Mark Young is permitted to visit inmate Paul Raymond, now residing in cell 101 in the Arizona State Prison. It's a long-standing custom of theirs to celebrate New Year's Eve together, and the warden felt that kindness could do no harm. Permission granted. Mark! You're here, Mark. Mark, I'd like you to meet the gentleman who just opened my cell door. Happy keeper of the keys, guard extraordinary in charge of such suspected murderers as myself, Paul Raymond. Oh, you're not serious. The, the charge isn't murder, it's suspicion. Would you mind standing up, sir? Mr. Young. Uh, me uh, stand up? Thank you. Hands out in front of you, please. Look, I, I don't like being frisked on New Year's Eve when the warden has okayed my visit here. And I'll tell you what else I don't like. I don't like Mr. Raymond being suspected of anything illegal, let alone the murder of his wife. I'll tell the one. Oh, what a world this is. Those outside the bars and those inside. <laughs> and who would have thought a year ago today we'd be seeing the old year out in a prison cell? Or that Louisa would be dead? Is it fate? What is it? I wonder. What is as long as I've known you, and that means going back to our college days, that the two women who've loved you... Isn't it strange what, what's happened to them? Mark, what are you... you thinking of Janice? Huh. And Louisa. The way they ended up. Yeah, I agree. A terrible way. You know, Mark, I... I never forgot Janice. I can say that honestly now. Paul, I don't know how to make you out. I really don't. Am I that complicated? I've never met a man as tough as you, almost as though you had no conscience. Ah, reminisce with me, old chum. I don't think you'll want to hear this. Try me. Do you remember the last day of college? I was putting all my books together, packing clothes, taking the pictures on the wall. You, I don't know where you were, raising Cain somewhere. It was getting late, around one in the afternoon. We were supposed to be out of our rooms by six. You hadn't been in since the night before, and there was a knock on the door. It's unlocked. Come in. Ah, oh, hi, Janice. Uh, Paul's not here. You packing? <laughs> that I am. You going home? Yeah, for about a week. Then I'm off to uh, Pace Architectural. Gonna put in a whole summer. Mark, do you know where he is? Paul? Oh, you got me. You think he'll be back soon? We better be. Everyone's supposed to be out by six. I'll wait for him. Uh, Janice, I, I can't guarantee Paul's going to show up. I mean, you know him. He's not going oh. to show up. <laughs> He's very good at making a liar out of me. Hi, Janice. Come to say goodbye to us lucky seniors are getting out. Next year it'll be your turn. Paul, 
<laughs> hey, honey, you better see the doctor. Mm-hmm. Colio doesn't sound much better than it did over the weekend. I've been to the doctor. What do you say? Will you live? Everything connected with me will live. Uh... Look, uh, kids, if you two want to be alone, I have to return these books to the library anyway. No, 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 stay. I, I just came up for a pack of cigarettes. We're due out of here at six on the button, Paul, and you haven't even started packing. Plenty of time. I have a business deal cooking in town, which I just have to lock up before going. Paul, I have to see you. Okay. So you have to see me. Have a good look. I mean I want to talk to you. So talk, kid. Go ahead. I have to talk to you alone. Uh, I'm on my way out, guys. Uh, look, I can't right now, Janice. How about how about down to the boat house? Say in half an hour, 2.30? Good, quiet place to talk. I'll get back here in plenty of time, Mark. Don't you worry your little head. See ya. Oh, I hate him. Janice, what's this all about? Uh, he's not going to show up at the boat house. Well, does it really matter? So you've had a little quarrel. Friends always do. Friends? He knows. I told him. Now that there's a problem, he's he's just giving me the brush. You mean Paul won't do anything? He says it's all my fault. He's right, of course. It, it was all my fault to be taken in by him. To believe we'd be married. Well, I thought he was very serious about you. He can walk away. But I can't. You don't know my family. Janice, take it easy. Now, I, I know Paul really loves you, but in many ways, he's just an irresponsible kid, and he hasn't come to terms with the situation yet. The doctor said if I, if I wait much longer, it'd be dangerous. How long has it been? Three months. You've known that long that you were pregnant? So did Paul. He kept saying, wait, wait, and I thought... Oh, what a fool I was. I thought we'd get married right after he graduated. Well, what makes you think you won't? Because he told me so last night. He said I'd better go see a doctor. He's got no conscience at all. I I know how he feels about you. Don't give up on him. Then you know more about him than he does. Look, I'm going. Uh, uh, Janice, will you keep me posted? I want to know. I I, want to help. Mark... Give this to him for me. Okay. Uh, should I know what's in this envelope? Fifty ten dollar bills that he gave me last night to take care of things. I don't want the money. Well, where are you going now? I don't know. Walk around the campus, I guess. Janice, will you come see me after you've talked to him in the boathouse? I, I want to know what happened. You think something will? Well, how do you know it won't? He may be going to pick up an engagement ring at Silver's right now to surprise you. Oh, I'd like to believe that. Just don't give up on him yet. I'll go to the boathouse and wait for him. Thanks, Mark. Oh, hi, Paul. Uh, You took your own sweet time. Now, look, it's 6 o'clock. I'm sorry, buddy, but I I can't hang around. Wait! Sit down, please. Something. Something terrible's happened. Something awful. I, I, I don't know what made her do it. I. Listen, Janice and I were. We were going to get married, you understand? We, we, we really were. That's the honest truth, Mark. Oh, well, what happened? She's dead. What? I. I got to the boathouse. We agreed to meet at 3.30, remember? Uh, no, not, not 3.30, Paul. 2.30. What do you mean, 2.30? Well, that's what you said, 2.30. I heard you. I couldn't have said 2.30. I was buying Green's Variety Store. We had a closing at 2.30. I'm going to buy a lot of stores. So y- you got to the boathouse at 3.30. Then what? I couldn't find her. I couldn't find Janice. I, 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 I went out. I looked around. I asked Roberts, the caretaker. He's seen me. He went back inside with me, and he found her. She had hung herself. It was awful. Paul, um, there'll be an autopsy. They'll find out she was pregnant. How did you know? Well, she came here. She gave me this money to give back to you. So you, so you knew everything? Well, not really. Only her side of it. You're still my buddy. Thank heaven for that. 
Oh, Mark. I would have married her. I just wanted a little time to get myself started. She, she had this crazy idea. I was giving her the brush. That wasn't true. Mark, you know me better than that, don't you, Mark? Yes, honorable guard? Just checking. Uh, guard? Yes, sir. Did the warden inform you I have permission to remain in Mr. Raymond's cell until after midnight? Yes, sir. I do not know why he keeps coming into my cell. <laughs> I don't know what he expects to find. Janice. Oh. Yeah, Janice. That was a grim episode in my life. How long was it, Mark, before we saw each other again? I'm not sure. I was established as an architect. I kept reading about you in the papers. Paul with this merger, that merger. Oh, you read about me, didn't you? And I began designing office buildings while you appeared to be gobbling... You asked me to be best man at your wedding to Louisa. Ah, that's when we got together again, I remember. And it was right. After that, we started a little custom of celebrating a new year together. Mm. Yeah, I enjoyed that. What uh, time is it? Um, 10.40. I'm thinking it was about uh, a quarter to 11. Louisa would start her alchemy with that special hot punch of hers. <laughs> Darn to think. In all the years we were married... I could never get her to make a decent New Year's Eve punch. All you could taste was the cranberry juice and the apple juice and the cinnamon and the cloves. And the she never put in enough vodka. So all you ended up drinking was hot fruit juice. No, I didn't mind it. You. <laughs> she could have served a cinnamon stick to you with an olive on top of it, and you'd be groveling with gratitude. Was I that obvious? Oh, listen, I didn't mind. I, I had my diversions. Paul, uh... In a little over an hour, the new year will start, and um, I, I can't honestly face it without telling you something that that I hope won't hurt you, but it, it hurts me to keep it secret. <laughs> Your problem is you've got a conscience. Yes, well, perhaps yours is that you haven't. Did you ever think that the girl you married might have known more about you than she admitted? Louisa. She knew nothing. We fell in love. We married and then, did she uh, have any regrets? Why should she? I kept my other private life. Private. And who would have said anything? You? No. I never kept score. But you've always been pretty ruthless. Mark, after all these years, are you blaming me for Janice? No. Did Louisa ever find out about her? Now, you tell me, Mark, tell me! If I were to cry out to the guard, no more visits, nothing. Sorry, sorry. Louisa couldn't have known. We had nine good years together, she and I. Very good years. This would have been our tenth New Year's Eve, so long as you believe she knew nothing. What is this? A Sunday school lecture? Look, I... Live my life my way, you live yours your way. But you don't care who gets hurt. Uh Uh-huh, so she did know you told Louisa. No, you didn't. I don't believe that. Fine friend you are. Oh, you don't need a friend, Paul. You need a keeper. If you are wondering why Mark made a special effort to spend New Year's Eve in prison with Paul, so am I. Why was he going back over a past they had both shared? Was it because there is something there neither of them can forget or wish to remember? I'll return shortly with Act Two to satisfy my curiosity. Friends have made a habit of spending New Year's Eve together. However, this hour before midnight on December 31st finds them in a prison cell where Mark, a successful architect, 
is visiting Paul, an equally successful businessman who, unfortunately, is being held on suspicion of engineering the death of his wife. Oh, all right, Buck, I'm sorry. Let's say you didn't tell Louise anything. But why did you bring up the subject? Because of what I have to tell you now. Paul, there was once something between the two of us. Louise and you? Yeah, it, it, it started ten years ago. At your wedding. <laughs> when you were my best man. That's right, that's right. And Louise's father came down from Maine to give his daughter away. Uh, Mr. Everts. I sure remember him. Dressed in his full regalia, chief of police of Pebble Harbor, Maine. I take thee, Louisa, to be my wedded wife. To have and to hold from this day forward. For better, for worse. For richer, for poorer. In sickness and in health. To love and to cherish. Till death do us part. I take thee, Paul, to my wedded husband. To have and to hold from this day forward. For better or worse. For richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish till death do us part. You and Louisa marched up the aisle married, and I went and stood by Chief Everett. Your daughter makes a beautiful bride. Did you see what she was doing? Your friend, Paul? Did I see what? All through the ceremony, while he was marrying Louisa, Paul was winking at the maid of honor. Why, uh, I didn't see that. Oh, yes, you did, young man. And you didn't like it any better than I did. He has a roving eye. I can only pray she's spared the heartbreak. So that was what that old man said to you. You were so obvious about it. It was then I thought it was time you and I saw as little of each other as we could. Then why did you agree after I married Louisa to come by for each New Year's Eve? You didn't like me. No, I didn't. And the more I learned about you and how you spent your time, the big deals, the mergers, the more I knew how little we had in common. Well, then why? Louisa... I had to keep tabs on her to make sure she was getting a fair shake. So I accepted those annual invitations year after year. What? Well, were you at the house our very first New Year's? I, I can't remember. I know I invited oh, you. Oh, yes, I went. And you weren't there when I got there. Oh, I knew where you were. It was in all the gossip columns. Louisa, uh... I hope I'm on time. Paul said to come at eight. Oh, come in, Mark. He's not here yet. Oh. <laughs> I, I, I guess he's working. Well, he didn't say. Well, I didn't decide to come until the last minute. Uh, it's, after all, your uh, first New Year's Eve together. Oh. And what are you, a stranger? Paul's best man? As a matter of fact, you've turned down more invitations than you've accepted. Yeah, only work got in the way. I must show you this. Paul gave it to me at breakfast. Isn't it beautiful? He put the chain around my neck, and now I can't take it off. The catch is bent. Well, I can see from here a big gold disc. Mm-hmm. Must be two inches across. For our first New Year's. Uh, look, can you see what's written on it? Um, for the only love of my life. <laughs> I hope he meant it. Well, why do you say that? I thought you knew Paul. Well, I think I do. Well, then you should share my hope. I do. I do. Uh, aren't you sure of his love, Louisa? No, Mark. I'm not. The hours passed. Nine o'clock. Ten. Quarter to eleven. Still, you hadn't returned. Oh, I knew where you were, Paul. And I could have killed you. That actress, Bianca. Well, was it? How could you be so unthinking? So so lacking in conscience? Bianca, yeah. That's what it was. You don't know what it did to me. 
Louisa was the first woman who'd come into my life since the death of my mother. Hey, that could explain a great deal. If you hadn't placed your mother on such a pedestal, perhaps today you wouldn't be a bachelor. Louisa came into my life. I felt she ought to be protected. I sat there. It got later and later. No, Paul. My heart went out to her. Louisa? Yes. Well, what can I do? We're waiting for Paul. What is there to do but wait? Oh, what time is it, Mark? Uh, midnight's only an hour away. I hope he's all right. He wasn't in an accident. I mean, you know how careless people get on New Year's Eve. There's a special angel that watches people like Paul. Keep them away from harm. <gasps> what was that? Oh. Silly of me. It was just the clock. It's, uh, 11 o'clock. Oh, Mark, I, I can't bear this waiting. Uh, look, I I'm, I'm, I'm leaving. I'm, I'm gonna go now. Where? I just can't bear to see you so upset. I, th I think I know where Paul is. I, I'm gonna go bring him back with me. Oh, no, no. Don't go, Mark. Don't you run out on me, too. I'd be all alone. I, I can't bear that. I, oh, I just can't. Louisa, shh, shh, shh. Now, don't cry. Come here. Put your head on my shoulder. You won't be alone, I promise you. I won't let you be alone. Oh, why is he like that? He knows I love him. It is New Year's Eve. Couldn't he spare me the time? Tonight? Now, he'll be here. There's just some stupid little reason that's keeping him so late. Now, here. Here. Take this handkerchief. Thank you. Wipe your eyes. Oh, I can't. Why not? You're holding me so close. I can't move my arm. Well, well, uh... Must have been quite a touching scene. I'm sorry I missed it. You came in soon after. You didn't notice me. I was shaking. Midnight came. We drank the punch. We sang Old Lang Syne. We pledged eternal friendship. Let me see if I can remember. First New Year's Eve. Yeah. It was most decidedly Bianca. Ha. <laughs> I would have checked everything for her. That's the way I felt about Louisa. Oh? Uh -huh. And Louisa? What did she feel for me? <sighs> Nothing more than a friend, I guess. But from that day on, I was a changed man. I never forgot. I haven't to this day, ten years later, the touch of her arms around my neck and the fragrance of her hair. She became all that was beautiful to me, and that was why, no matter how you behaved, Paul, I felt that I betrayed you. Oh, Mark, I can't get over this. Because of that little episode, that nothing, you felt guilty. Oh, I don't suppose you would. But to me, living in the same neighborhood, you so often out of town, me at my drawing board, within walking distance of your house, and, and Louisa... But you were a good boy and you didn't drop in to see her while I was away. Is that what you want me to believe? I don't care what you believe. There are a lot of people who aren't like you. Oh, Mark, I wasn't always like that. It's the work. What I do is completely absorbing. And what I play, it's the same. Louisa knew the person I was before she married me. Now she's gone. That's life. Lord, you speak without any feeling. You don't know what I feel. Now, you finished with your mad culpas. Almost. Ah, oh, happy the keeper of the keys will be coming back to make sure I haven't escaped. Whatever they're afraid suspected murderers will do. Then, what happened? Well, nothing until a year later. Again, I arrived at your house at 8 o'clock. Oh, and this time you were home. You'd been on a bender the day before and lay asleep on the sofa. Louise and I sat together in the kitchen. Very romantic. I'm afraid the kitchen's the only place we can talk without disturbing Paul. 
He's been so busy, he's, he's simply exhausted. Louisa, uh, I, I think I'll skip this New Year's Eve thing. I'll, I'll stay a couple of minutes and then go home. Oh, he'll be terribly disappointed. Have you had dinner? Yeah, I did, an early one. <laughs> I don't eat much evenings. I'm usually working then. Well, if you've no work to do, won't you please stay? For me? Yes. Mark, why have you been such a stranger? Oh, I go where people want buildings built, and I go home to design them and then back to supervise the building. Paul hasn't been home much either. He's always off on one of his surprise attacks, as he calls them. He works it out so a little company secretly buys up stock in a big company and then swallows it. Hmm. You've become quite a corporation wife in the past 12 months. Does it make you happy? <laughs> happy? Oh, I don't know. Disappointed. Oh? Uh-huh. Why? Paul doesn't want any children. Um, Louisa, should you be... and Paul didn't come home. And then, for one moment, you and I... What, what, what I'm trying you to say You held is, me in your arms. And you comforted me. Louisa, I cannot bring myself to come to this house year after year seeing you as his wife. I cannot do it. Mark, listen, please. I still love him. Do you understand that? I'm married to him. And so far as my feelings go, he can do what he likes with whomever he likes and still come home and find me here, waiting. And the other thing, Mark, is that I want a family. We've talked about it, Paul and I. I want babies. But you said that Paul didn't... I think he will. In time. What does he say, yes or no? Well, now he says, let's wait, maybe. Don't you understand now why there can't be anyone else for me but Paul? He'll change. He'll settle down. and I want nothing on my conscience when he does. Okay. So be it, I understand. Uh, but, look, I can't stay tonight. Um... Tell Paul when he gets up, I have to catch an early morning plane for Arizona. Oh, he'll be very disappointed. Is it because of me? Uh, no, no, no. I, I have a commission for a house near Phoenix. <laughs> I've always hankered to do a desert house, and this will be it. <laughs> oh, maybe one day you'll design a house for us? Well, well, why not? If Paul decides to remain in one place, <laughs> this, uh, this desert house would suit you. Oh, look, I, I, really, I really must go home. Well, I'll take you to the front door. Mark, how would it suit me? Well, I'm, I'm doing it in exposed wood framing and um, a great sheltering slate roof with wide overhanging eaves. <laughs> and, of course, a pool, uh, natural slate rock. Oh, I can just see it in the Arizona desert. I've read so much about it. It'd be a perfect house for Paul and me and four children. A lovely dream. I'll keep dreaming, Louisa. Uh, I'm sorry I made such a fool of myself before. Oh, Mark. You didn't. I, I just don't know what to say. Oh, you said it all. Goodbye. <laughs> Nobody ever died of heartbreak, we are told by the poets. Yet, as Mark Young remembers his farewell to Louisa, he also remembers that at that moment, he thought his life had drained away and was totally empty. I shall return shortly with Act Three. Taking a laxative? Yeah, traveling throws my system off. But so can a laxative. Not Metamucil. That's Metamucil. Minute... 
Mark Young, a successful architect, shared his college days with Paul Raymond, today an extraordinary man of business specializing in company takeovers, known as mergers. What they could not share was the love of Louisa, Paul's wife. Set me as a seal upon thine heart, says the Song of Solomon, for love is strong as death, jealousy as cruel as the grave. And in a newly dug grave lies Louisa, and blamed for her death is her husband Paul, in prison, suspected of murdering her. Why, well, you've never stopped being my friend, Mark, and I... I appreciate that. Mark, you think I'm innocent? Yes, I do. And I'll tell you why. You remember I decided to stay on in Arizona and make that my home. <laughs> well, that's more. I remember two years later, we followed you out there. Paul! You are the last person I ever expected would walk into my office in this neck of the desert. And you do not know the half of it, Mark. Louise and I aren't just visiting. We're staying here. We've, we've decided to make Arizona our home. Oh, how is she? It's, it's uh, been two years. Yeah. Well, she's all right. You don't sound very enthusiastic. Well, I, I guess I'm not. <laughs> you, uh... Really get to know a woman after you've lived with her for a few years. All that innocent thing <laughs> when you first meet them turns into real conniving after they've latched onto a good thing. Paul, I don't know what to say. That that doesn't sound like her at all. In my business, uh, conniving. Getting your own way. It's the name of the game. This this is Louisa's idea. Really, we we want you to design a house for us, Mark. In the meantime, we've rented the Thornton place outside of Phoenix. You know that? Oh, yeah. I drive right by there every day on my way to the office. No servants except for a housekeeper. We had her with us back east for over a year now. Good, capable woman. Paul, any children? Oh, no, thank heavens. You didn't want them? I wouldn't have worked. I want to go all the time. Sometimes I like to take Louisa with me. You can't drag babies all over the world, though. I'm not much into fatherhood anyway. Well, I thought Louisa wanted a family. Mm, yeah, she still talks about it sometimes. But I think she's come round to seeing things my way. We have a full life. Hmm. You see anything of Louisa's father? Old Everett? Chief of police at Pebble Beach? Yeah, Louisa keeps in touch. When would you rent the Thornton place? A month ago. Gosh, you, you two have been here all that time? Yeah, I'm... I'm surprised Louisa didn't call you. She, well, she hasn't been that well. I'm not sure Arizona's going to agree with her, but I've got to make this my base. Whole new development scheme. I shouldn't even be talking about it on the other hand. You're my oldest friend, so why not tip you off so you can make yourself a bundle? Uh, first things first. Now, I'll get your ideas on the kind of house you want. <laughs> you probably have a bundle by now. You mad? Uh, no, I, I haven't found Miss Wright yet. Well, I guess we've almost caught up on each other's lives. <laughs> now, this year, Mark, we've got to spend New Year's Eve together again. Like we used to, huh? What are you doing for dinner tomorrow? Well, I, I said tonight, but I'm flying to Vegas. I'll be back late tomorrow. Are you inviting me? We are. Oh, nothing fancy. The housekeeper had to go back east. Her brother's sick. But Louisa loves to cook. Okay. I'll be there. Great. And, uh, give Louisa my love. I'll just tell her you're coming to dinner. You can give her your love yourself. When I drove up to your house the next night, it was a blackened shell. Flames still licking at fallen timbers, the hoses still going. You were in front with the fire chief, and when you saw me, you ran over. They can't find Louisa. She's in there somewhere. They haven't found her. Louisa? Is he mad? The chief says they have to wait till all the timber school off before they can send the men in. Well, I'm not waiting. Oh, Mark, don't. Maybe she's not even in there. Louisa? Louisa? Get back! Get back! Louisa! Where are you? Get that crazy guy out of here! Look out! The You sleep? Uh, no, I'm awake. 
call. Which hospital am I in? Phoenix, General. How are you feeling today? Pretty alone. No visitors? Well, you know what I mean. Louisa, gone forever. Oh. Yeah, I know. Anybody, uh, stop by? Well, a couple of men from the office just left. They wanted to know how long I'd be here. When are they taking the bandages off? On the end of the week, I hope. It kind of went off my head, I think. Oh. Louise? Oh, come on, Mark. I... I know how you feel. Do you? Yesterday, there was a brief moment when they gave me an inkling of hope. But no, it... Nothing. I had this crazy idea. I thought maybe it wasn't Louisa they found. Maybe, maybe it was your housekeeper. I wonder what time you thought of that. I mean, I I did too. That, what I meant when I said it turned out to be nothing. They, they took me to the morgue to make a positive identification. There wasn't much to recognize except that gold charm I, I gave her for our first New Year's. It was awful. She's really gone. In all that heat, would you believe it? You you could still make out the writing on the charm. Where's the housekeeper? I kick myself. I know her brother lives in Boston, but some roomy house. I don't know the address. She'd taken off the day before the fire. Oh. Yeah, you did tell me that. I remember now. Get well, Mark. You're the only link I have now with my sanity. Take care. Okay? I'll stop by tomorrow. Okay. Thanks. Is this the nurse's station? Yeah, I wonder if you could put through a person-to-person call for me to Chief Everett's. The chief of police in Pebble Harbor, Maine. There isn't a word of truth to the murder charge they're holding me on. I, I got rattled. I, I said I'd come back on one plane from Vegas. I forgot I had to change planes, and I got in earlier than I said. I'm sorry about this, Paul. Hot. Fire department. They've got it all backwards. They said they found some gallons of gasoline in the whole closet. It was cleaning fluid. Whoever set fire to the house, it wasn't me. Like I told them, I was coming in from Vegas. And all the time, I thought I owed you an explanation. What for? Oh, Louise? Oh, that's nonsense. You want to know something, Mark? You want to know why I ran around and didn't care if she found out or not? She knew how you felt about her. She told me. She also told me that you were the... One and only love of her life. Mr. Young, there's a visitor to see you and Mr. Raymond. Who is it? I don't want to see anyone. It's your father-in-law, Paul. Open the cell door, guard. Yes, Chief. Mr. Efforts. Now, listen, I'm sorry. David. Hello, Mark. I think I've got all the information we were looking for. What is all this about? Chief Everett has been doing some investigating since I got out of the hospital. Investigating? What's to investigate? It was an accident, faulty wiring. Who knows? Paul, do you remember a girl called Janice? What is this? The year you and Mark graduated. What are you trying to pin on me? The girl you said had died in a boathouse. There seems to be some questions as to how she died, whether it was suicide or strangulation. An autopsy is being performed. What are you... They did that already, an autopsy, years ago. Perhaps not as carefully as they should. What's waking up all... Things that happened long ago. What's that got to do with my being held here? Oh, I see. (laughs) You never liked me, Chief Everett. Not from the moment I married Louisa. So you're going to fabricate anything you can so that her death can be hung on me. You're wrong, Paul. You think I wanted to get rid of her, but I set fire to the house. I'm going to get myself the best lawyer there is and beat all of you. You too, Mark. You're against me. That's why you came here today, to rehash what we've lived through. Paul, 
You're wrong about one thing. I don't believe you're responsible for the death of Louisa. In fact, I'm sure you had nothing to do with it. Well, at least that's one honest opinion. And he's a chief of police, too. He ought to know what he's talking about. Yes. Guard, what is it now? I just wanted to tell you people it's one minute after 12. Thank you, Guard. Happy New Year. And there's someone here from the warden's office to see you, Mr. Raymond. Oh, it's a good thing I've got a decent-sized cell. Sure. Uh, let her in. The more, the merrier. Happy New Year, Paul. Lou. Louisa. Happy New Year, Daddy. Happy New Year, Louisa. Get out. Get out, all of you. I don't want to see anybody. It's a frame-up. You hear me? A frame-up? God, get these people out of here. This is my cell. I had no idea you might still be alive. Louisa, what a thing to do to all of us. Well, not to Father. He knew. I was staying with him at home in Maine. You see, Miss Benson, our housekeeper... She never made that trip to her brother. After Paul had gone to Las Vegas, her brother called and said he was out of danger. I just decided it was a good time to visit Dad in Pebble Harbor. I needed his advice about a lot of things. So I left Miss Benson to take care of the house. Well, did you know that Paul identified her as you because of the gold charm he'd given you? Yes, I- I'd given it to her. It's a terrible thing. She had to... Pay the price of being mistaken for you. Well, any guesses on what happened? It'll all come out of the trial. But I suspect Paul got home early, set the fire, and left. Then later he returned, pretending he just arrived. Mark, Daddy told me you went into the house when it was burning to save me. <laughs> well, you... yes, yes, I did. And you ended up in the hospital. Bruised, but not burned. How can I thank you? Oh, I'll think of something. In the meantime, what about dinner? Well, I guess in my marriage to Paul, I ended up burned, but not bruised. Do you think uh, you two might recover? Oh, I don't know. We could give it a try. I like... A story that ends on a note of hope. I like to know that in spite of tragedy, here are two people who can pick up the threads of their lives and begin to weave a rewarding lifetime together. Louisa and Mark were fortunate to find their own road to a future which detoured well around an ugly past. I shall return shortly. Hi, I'm Susan Anton. Fitness that feels good by day needs firmness that feels good by night. That's why you'll love the Serta Perfect Sleeper. Luxurious top comfort plus deep inner support. You get both with every perfect sleeper. So remember, be a perfect sleeper. The perfect sleeper, perfect sleeper. It's a healthy investment in yourself. Honey, we're having cheeseburgers like we've never had them before. We are? Here's your fork. My fork? Yes, your fork. Where's my bun? Hamburger Helper Day Cheese. I want my bun. Help your hamburger day cheese. Mm. Hamburger Helper, help your hamburger helper. Make cheeseburger mac. Our cheeseburger macaroni is a blend of tangy cheese, hearty macaroni, and savory seasonings that give cheeseburgers a whole new meaning. Hamburger Helper. Well, did you miss the bun? Help your hamburger. <laughs> what bun? Hamburger Helper, help your hamburger helper. I think of the character of Paul as ruthless, self-centered, and as we used to say at home, too big for his britches. I myself steer clear of people like that, and for what it's worth, I caution you to beware of the man who has no conscience. He is not of the order to be lived with. He lives by his own rules and dies by them. After all, he who loses his conscience has nothing left worth keeping. Our cast included Michael Wager, Russell Horton, and Joyce Gordon. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. And now, 
a preview of our next tale. They are bomb? That's correct. Only waiting to be exploded. My camera, which I substituted for yours, is a timing device. And the flashlight? That is the detonator. Now, as I am talking, I have put them all together. It only remains to set the... Me-